Good morning. This is really a subject that I love. A um, little background. For 15 years now, I've been measuring and fitting for custom compression garments. In 2004, I drove out from Philadelphia to Chicago just looking for adventure, not really knowing what my purpose was. And I became an independent pump provider, and that got my foot into, door, my foot into the door and to a great community. So first, I want to start out with a proper thank you to everybody here. Um, you've given me a purpose over the last 15 years. So with that being said, uh, so for two years, I was a pump provider. And then one day, I went to the Rehab Institute of Chicago to do an in-service. And a great therapist there by the name of Katie Polo, who's an educator now, said, you know, John, we have lots of pump providers. But we, what we really need is somebody that can measure and fit for custom-made flat knit garments. I just became certified. And I learned all about these garments. And I don't feel that we're getting people in the right garments. And like every young entrepreneur, I said, I can do that. <laughs> well, have you ever done that before? No. She's like, we're going to do it together. So this is the manufacturer I want to use. Here's the form. Learn everything you can. And back then, um, I didn't know that there were manufacturer reps that would come out and train you. So we just did it cold. And the first patient that I saw was a male, 5'10", 600 pounds, stage 3 lymphedema, needing a custom-made flat-knit pantyhose. And, and I don't have to ask, you guys know what that involves. So uh, Katie and I measured for about an hour and a half. And then three, three weeks later, she tried to keep him contained, as you know how difficult that is. Um, we fit him, and it was perfect. And I was hooked, right? I found it, my purpose. So, so then, uh, I didn't have an office, I don't have a clinic, I didn't have a store. I had an air mattress and I ate spaghetti every night because you're just trying to stay alive. <laughs> right? So then uh, one patient turned into two, to four, to eight, to 16, to 30. You get it. Um, and then my, there were fitters in Chicago. There's plenty of great fitters in Chicago. But my X factor was I will go to the home because I wasn't going to have them come to my studio and see my air mattress. Uh, <laughs> so I would go to you, go to the clinic. And then we started having clinic days. You know, at this hospital, that hospital, wound care, lymphedema. Uh, John, I need you to hear from 8 to 12, and we're going to measure a patient every half hour. And that became our business model. 15 years later, I have a staff of 20. We have five fitters. And that ratio kind of tells you the environment that we're in right now, that I need 15 people to do the administrative side, the billing, the verification. And our objective for this discussion is uh, I want to discuss compression options with patients to help ensure that they will be able to succe successfully self-manage their lymphedema for the rest of their lives with correct compression garments. Um, correct means garments that will maintain swelling for a minimum of six months, not whatever just gets them discharged. Okay? So I work with approximately 200 plus clinics in Illinois alone. And we drive because I, I kept that business model of going to the clinic. Many of them come back when they need to be remeasured to our office six months later, a year later, but every six months typically to be reordered if they're free of edema. But we drive around 250,000 miles a year. In 2018 alone, I drove over 50,000 miles. So why? Why do I drive over 50,000 miles? Did I find them? No, those great therapists found me. If any of you know the geography of Illinois, I live in Chicago, but my, my clinic days are in Champaign, Bloomington, Peoria, and Springfield. Just to give you a picture of a, one of my days, Monday morning, wake up at five, drive two and a half hours to Springfield, measure and fit every half hour, skip lunch, drive home, wife checks out, I handle the boys, bath, nap time, you get it. It's a long day. How does that work? How does that work? Um, these patients are all getting the correct compression garment. So everywhere else, how are they not? These are our garments by the numbers. As you can see here, I want you to take note of custom daytime, lower extremity. This is our wheelhouse. Lower extremity patients, custom. Then off the shelf alternative, that'll be your Velcro. Custom nighttime, custom daytime, and all the way at the bottom you'll see off the shelf daytime, 
off-the-shelf daytime lower extremity. These are our compression garments for prevention. We rarely ever do circular knit ready to wear because we don't find that they work in the world of lymphedema. And then the other would be bandages and pumps. Okay. So we spend the majority of our time getting patients the correct compression garments. Because in this world, this only works, you don't profit if you're driving 250,000 miles a year if you are not getting patients into the correct thing. How my company profits is when they come back. They are not gonna come back if I put them in the wrong compression garment. So payers by the numbers. What I want to talk about is that 12%. So these are patients that do not have insurance that cover compression garments. These are your out-of-pocket pay. The 88% is our private insurance, is Medi some are Medicaid. We have a national VA contract. These guys are covered. The 12%. Now, what I'm being told about that 12%, when they're not fit into the right thing, is that money is the issue. Patients will not pay for the correct garment. Patients by the numbers. So 47% of our patients last year are existing patients. So those are patients that come back, right? So these are patients that come back for a new order. 35% are new, are new patients. And 18% are remakes. These are orders that we have to redo. So the garment didn't fit right, we redo it. And uh, the manufacturers are great with that supporting us. There's no cost to the patient or the insurance company for that. So the common problem, what we're discussing today, patients are choosing incorrect compression garments based on cost instead of the garments effectiveness and value leading to poor self-management and readmission to lymphedema therapy. So is it really cost? Um, I don't believe that it's cost, and here's why. I believe that we are not properly explaining the value of this product to them for phase two self-management. And I know this because I am driving 50,000 miles a year to go to a clinic that does it right. I don't have to say a word when I go into these clinic days. The therapists have already explained the value with congruency on what it means to get the correct thing. When a patient says to you, I cannot afford that, right? Can, you have to ask them, can you afford not to get the right thing? And you need to do this early. This needs to be an initial evaluation conversation. So I put together seven steps for you. So step one, I want you to prepare yourself, okay? Educate yourself on all the different compression garments out there, right? Um, there are great manufacturing reps that will come out to you and educate you on the products. There are great fitters out there that should come out to you and, and demonstrate as well, okay? And go over insurance benefits in your area. Um, take an advanced fitting class. Uh, Gunther has a great advanced fitting class. I usually go to at least one a year. And I learn maybe one or two things that I didn't know at each one of those classes. Obtain garment samples. A lot of times patients don't understand the value or the difference between an off-the-shelf circular knit and $40 and custom flatten it for $400 because they never get an opportunity to hold that product. You have to have samples. You have to demonstrate. Um, they really need to understand the difference between compression and containment. You can get better results with an 18 to 21 flat knit than you can with a 20 to 30 circular knit or 30 to 40 off the shelf. Uh, educate yourself on Medicare and Medicaid coverage for compression. Far too often, I have patients that come into my clinic and say, I am here, or my office, say, I am here today because my therapist sent me to see you to be measured for compression garments. And I say, oh, well, you didn't have an appointment, but thanks for coming in. Um, she said to ask you if it was covered by Medicare. I know this therapist. She already knew this, you know? So for the next hour and a half, we talk about the Lymphedema Treatment Act. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is a great act, and we want it to get passed, but it's not passed yet. Is that a good use of our time? No. Um, they, the patient also had no idea what the cost of these garments is. They are not afraid, okay? They understand that these things cost money. They are seeking you for help.
They're not going to go through phase one and be bandaged for one week, two weeks, three weeks, and then let phase two self-management just fall through the cracks. Okay? They want to get better. Ex if you explain the value of the product, they will pay. Now, I'm not naive. Cost is an issue. But it's not where you always think it is. How come a lot of my fitting days, a lot of my fitting days are in wound care, in some of the poorest neighborhoods in Chicago, they always pay because the therapists there have leverage. These patients have already gone through all the off-the-shelf compression garments, all the wrong garments for years. At this point, day one, the therapist tells them, this is what you're going to need. Your insurance, unfortunately, does not cover. This is why you need it. This is what's going to happen if you don't get it. When I go in there into my fitting day, I meet them for the first time with my measuring tape. Check's already made, cash is in hand, credit card is there. Congruency, I think a lot of, pro a lot of times, um, we don't want to come off as salesmen uh, to, to the patients. But really, sales, all sales is, is figuring out what your patients' beliefs are and aligning your beliefs with them. Okay? You need to speak of these products with congruency. Okay? And, and that's all really sales is. You just need to know that these products are effective. They are going to work. And this is why. When I'm introduced by therapists that bring me in for a fitting day, for a patient that's gonna pay out of pocket, they don't just say, this is John, he's gonna measure and fit you for custom knee highs, goodbye. They say, this is John. He has been measuring and fitting for custom compression garments for 15 years. He is extremely knowledgeable and I've known him for a long time. He is going to measure you today for the custom compression garments that we talked about. This is a must have, okay? He's gonna measure you today and in about two weeks, he's gonna fit you with those products. Okay. Enough said. You know, patient's ready to go. That's really all that's needed. But you have to speak of these products with congruency. And how do you do that? First, align yourself with a good fitter. Okay, if you can't find a good fitter, go to one of the Gunther's class classes or ask Juzo Jobs Medi if there's any good fitters in their area. Talk to those fitters. Make sure that your beliefs align with them. Too many times I'm hearing therapists sent their patients to the DME for X, Y, and Z, and they came back with ABC. Okay? That's a big problem. If they're doing that, drop them. Okay? If you don't trust your fitters, okay, your patients aren't going to trust the fitters. Okay? Share information. Arm your fitters with as much patient background information as possible. I've heard it several times already today. Um, inability to die. Okay? Or uh, financial limitations. Maybe I need to know ahead of time I need to set up a payment plan. But in short, if a patient can tie their shoes, Velcro their shoes, the easiest compression garment to get on for a lower extremity patient is the custom-made flat knit compression class two or three. And that's what they seem to do best in, okay? Not a Velcro garment. I love Velcro garments, but if you, I've never had a patient that can tie their shoes, Velcro their shoes, not be able to get it on if they can do that one simple thing. You know what I tell them? I say, if I am wrong, I will give you the Velcro garment for free. Okay? And I've never had to give the Velcro garment away. We have great donning aids, and I never have to sell them. What a fitter needs to do, or a therapist needs to do, is properly educate the patient how to don and doff and take care of these garments. This takes work. Okay? The DMEs that I see, I love them, but I don't feel that they are doing the job as correctly as I am. You need to spend a lot of time with these patients to really figure out how are you going to get this on? How are we going to work with you? Uh, is this the proper garment? You know, you have to arm your fitters with information, and the fitters have to take responsibility, okay? There is plenty of time in a day for them to do this properly. Become a team. You need synergy. What works, our philosophy, our secret sauce, is patient, fitter, therapist, all working together. And most of the time, it works great in the clinic. A lot of times, patients go to the fitter's office, and they've forgotten a lot of what, they've, what you've told them to get. If we are all working together, you're going to have a lot more success. And I know that's always, not always possible, okay? Um, but at least a good introduction. Highlight your fitter's experience, like I said, in pre-framing. Step three, discuss the garment plan with your patient. 
a general idea, insurance coverage, approximate out-of-pocket cost, garment fitter and company name, when and where the garment evaluation will take place, and when and where the fitting will, will take place. Again, th these are good conversations to have on day one. Step four, get your patient involved with asking questions. Okay, It shows that you really care and narrows down the garment selection, creates a strong rapport between you and the patient, gives the patient the ability to be in control. Questions your patients should be asking. Okay, if they're not asking this, if, if they're not asking these questions, you need to lead the, the, the conversation uh, so you get these answers, okay? If you're asking these questions for them and they're not helping you, okay, if you're asking questions or not giving you information, then you haven't really established rapport. Establish rapport first before you start asking questions. But this information right here is very, very helpful, okay? Make recommendations and highlight the positives and show samples of the products that you're recommending. Evaluate and measure. Patients are more likely than not to purchase the correct garment after they see me measure. You know how many measurements are in custom-made pantyhose? There's 27. Knee highs, 14. Thigh highs, 17. Okay? CA, CY, CB, CB1, CC, CD, CE, CF, CG, right? Medial, lateral, full foot, LB, LB1, LC, LD, LE, LF, LG, K1, K2, right? CT, CH, right? When they see that, a lot of times you don't want to give them the quote yet. Let them see all the work involved. Explain that this is going to be perfect for you. When you get a good fitting garment, the patient's feeling, ah, where's that been? That's why I keep doing this. Because I am contributing to something, and these are friends. These are patients that come back to me every six months. If you don't have a fitter as dedicated as I am, find somebody else. Phase two is so important. Right? Step seven, turn objections into questions. Every patient's gonna have objections. These are the most common. I can't afford it. What will it cost you if you don't purchase these garments? I will never be able to get those on my things myself. Can you reach down and tie your Velcro shoes with your hands? They cause too much pain. Can you describe the garment to me? Most of the garments that cause pain, if they're causing pain, it was the wrong garment. Patients always ask me, how do I know if this is working? Well, if you're swelling, one, if there's pain, two, it's not working, come back and see me. If, if you get them the right thing, it is going to feel good. They cost too much. Do they cost too much, or have I not done a good enough job explaining the value of this product? That's one question I always ask. If it is the value, then you need to do your presentation again. If it is the cost, what you've just done is you've Define the problem in solvable terms. If it is the cost, then we need to do a payment plan, see if the fitter can spread it out over a few, over a few months. This is when it's done right. Phase two and getting the correct compression garment. It's nice and clean. This is when it's incorrect. You guys have all seen this before, and this could have actually been three pages. In short, this flow, flow chart shows that they spend more time in wound care therapy in the hospital for infection, just a decreased quality of life. The master summary here is, Prepare yourself and become an expert on compression garments. You can't speak with congruency if you don't know what these products are and what they do. Align yourself with an experienced fitter that shares the same beliefs and values that you have. Establish rapport with your patients. You guys do a great job of that already. Ask questions and probe for specific details on past garments. Past history really helps them get into the right thing. If they're stuck on the cost and just want to go back to what they found on Amazon, you can go over, well, what did that compression garment do for you? You know, it caused pain, discomfort, it led you back here. We need to get you into the right thing now. Present with congruency, and I can't express how important that is, and turn objections into questions. Here's my references. I'm done. I'm way over. Sorry. <laughs>